This is a Dell Optiplex 780. Now, I don't know what's in it yet, but based on its ultra small form factor, I doubt it's anything good. A friend dropped it off by my house one day because he didn't want it, and now I'm gonna see how well or how poorly it'll run games. But before we get into testing it, I'm gonna take it apart, clean it out, and replace the thermal paste. Let's get out our screwdriver kit first of all. We have a singular thumb screw holding it all together next to the bent security bracket. Pop the front cover off. There's the hard drive and disk drive. SATA cable, the power cable. Two two gigabyte sticks of DDR3 memory. This was the first red flag, and it was now when I realized this computer was probably just gonna be garbage. And there's the heatsink off. It's got some very crusty thermal paste. And for the CPU, it looks like we have a Focus, a Core 2 Duo E7500. That's uh, not a great processor, but it's what we're gonna be working with. Wait, how, how does it go back in? Oh, we also got some good old HY510 thermal paste. So let's put that on there. And I would clean out the heatsink, but it doesn't look that dirty. You can basically see through it, kind of. So it's good enough for me. You also might notice at this point that this system seems to be lacking a graphics card, which is probably gonna be an issue. It's not going back together. <laughs> oh, it's bent. The metal is bent over here. That's why. As good as new, baby. After turning it on, the first thing I was greeted with was a low voltage battery warning, which is always a great sign. It also didn't have an operating system, so I installed a copy of Windows 7 because I didn't think it could handle Windows 10. Soon after, I ran into yet another issue. I wanted to install the Wi-Fi drivers, and it turns out the disk drive didn't work. It ejects the tray, but it wouldn't read or even acknowledge when a disk was placed inside. So I borrowed another one from the Testbench PC, swapped it out, and achieved speeds of 1 megabyte per second. Next, I set up GPU-Z and found the computer was blessed with the almighty power of the Intel GMA X4500i GPU. I have never heard of that before, but apparently it came out in June of 2008. It was based on the Eagle Lake graphics lineup using the 65 nanometer process. It has a GPU clock of 533 MHz, 80 shading units, 10 texture mapping units, a singular render output unit, and 10 execution units. It also only supports up to DirectX 10 and uses shared system memory, so that 4 gigs of RAM Windows 7 is already eating up is also being used by the GPU. On the other hand, the CPU seemed a bit more promising. It doesn't support hyper-threading, but it does have 3 megabytes of L2 cache, 2 threads, and 2 cores running at a respectable 2.93 gigahertz. With all this power, the system idle readings were about what you'd expect. The CPU sat at about 1-5% to with occasional spikes to 30 and was using 1 and a quarter gigs of RAM. This wasn't a great sign but based on how smooth Windows ran, I was actually optimistic. And there's even room for upgrades. Turns out the best CPU you can throw in this edition was the E8600, which should be about 12% faster. You can also throw in up to 8 gigs of RAM, but because there's no PCIe slot, you're stuck with the GMA graphics processor, which can't be upgraded to a dedicated GPU. But for now, I wanted to see how it would hold up in a few older titles. So leave a like, comment, or subscribe, because you made it this far and it genuinely helps me out. Now let's get into it. First of all, can it run Crisis Warhead? No. The game automatically set itself to the mainstream preset, but I lowered it as far as possible in a resolution of 800 by 600, the game would only get into the loading screen and then crash. With this in mind, I switched over to Far Cry and in 1440 by 900 with the medium settings got an average frame rate of 24. At this point, any hope I had left for this GMA graphics processor was depleted. The GPU was pinned at 100% and it was struggling. Maybe if you threw in more RAM, it might run a bit better, but it seems like the actual GPU core was the one holding back performance. Next was Half-Life 2, which in 1280 by 1024 in the lowest settings got an average frame rate of 33. Now that's not great, especially considering the game's age and the settings that we were using, but the resolution was above 720p and it did manage to surpass that 30 FPS mark. I'm sure Far Cry would have seen similar performance had we lowered settings a bit more, but for now, setting everything to low seemed to be the way to go. Luckily, in Return to Castle Wolfenstein, we were able to get an average of over 100 frames per second. This game came out in 2001 and requires a Pentium 2 processor and any graphics card with DirectX 8 capabilities. Needless to say, in a resolution of 1280 by 1024 with the medium settings, the system blew this benchmark out of the water. It got an average of 132 FPS, which was to be expected, and also demonstrates the general age range of games that are going to run well. After this, I was only able to test one more game, Need for Speed Underground. I haven't run this one in a long time, but it performed well, and in a resolution of 1280 by 1024, got an average frame rate of 
negative 37 FPS. Interestingly enough, it didn't seem like the GPU core was holding back performance. It sat at only about 60% utilization, with the CPU at 50%, so I'm guessing the lack of available system memory and subsequently VRAM was the issue. But the frame rate was above 30 FPS, and with no stuttering or screen tearing, I guess I can't complain. In other news, I also tried to run Terraria, which didn't work, GTA San Andreas, which gave an audio card error, Enter the Gungeon, which crashed immediately, Far Cry 3, which wouldn't even launch, and Morrowind, which spat out a DLL error. Cumulatively, some of those issues may have been due to my unactivated version of Windows 7, but even if they were able to start, I doubt most of them would be able to run well. Overall, the benchmarks went a bit worse than I expected. I know it's not much, but based on how well the system was running Windows, I expected to get higher frame rates, especially in titles like Far Cry. I mean, Wolfenstein ran well, but that game came out 8 years before this computer did, so that's not saying much at all. Still, I can't help but feel like the lack of RAM in this system played a big role in its lackluster performance. The iGPU was constantly struggling, but it probably would have struggled a little less with a little more VRAM. If you were able to throw in 16 gigs of RAM in a dedicated graphics card, this system would likely have a decent amount of life left in it. The CPU was never the bottleneck, and was rarely pinned at 100% during my Windows usage benchmark, but I guess the sold Optiplex was never meant to live this long anyways. I'll probably end up trying to sell it, and if anyone buys it, I'm gonna be surprised. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jane Knight Discord server in the description alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to them. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.